Hello, I am Nelk the Bandit, and um, today we're continuing with our Space Shooter prototype. Um, so, where we left off, tell you where we left off, we have a little, little guy. I slowed the projectiles down so I can show you something. <sighs> Things explode if they get hit enough. The one thing I did notice was this little issue with the pulling is if I hit hit something sometimes like the projectiles get in the pool multiple times so we'll try to get it again and it will reset. We're, we're, we're essentially shooting an active item and that's why it's doing that weird like looping thing sometimes. So let's um, turn this speed back up 10. Um, then, uh, we can, what's next? Um, let's fix it, I guess. Let's fix it. Um, so we can fix it number of ways but I think the way I want to do it is this guy I literally just got a new computer and so like I'm some stuff that's probably not set up right and but here's the idea so what we want to do instead of instead of returning it to pool on collision cuz um cuz that might be happening and this also might be happening on became visible it's happen it might be happening we want to get rid of these and just do game objects at false and then think in the actual pooling uh, pooling class pull this in class we can go it's a modern behavior so we just do private void on the disa disable we can just return it to the pool oh I can just call this like, like that bam so yeah so we don't have to worry about it so just whenever a pulled object is disabled, it will return. So that's good. Um, let's open twice. So yes. So what else is pulled? So the enemies are pulled, right? Manager enemy destroyed. Oh, see if if it becomes invisible, then we just want to disable it here now. So, oh no, I always do that. So we just do a quick search, find references of where this is used, and. Uh, What's up, man? What's up, Clady? Um, find references where this is used. And. Right, this is it? No, there's at least one more spot, right? Don't we have something like return? I don't know, my Visual Studio is being weird. Turn to pull after time, right? I think we want to just turn this into disable after time, essentially. What's all with this? Instead of doing this, we're going to do game object dot set active equals false. And we want to call this disable after time 
But now we can just... When something gets disabled... Rename it there. It's important you rename stuff in inside the project and not outside in the folder structure because then it will keep the references. So if I look at my uh, F explosion thing here, right, it'll still have my references to the disable after time script. All right, so that really shouldn't do anything except make make it not as buggy. So. So I'm not seeing this issue anymore. And now turn this off and go. And we're seeing we have enemy ships still still uh still being reused, which is good. Oh, they shouldn't be increasing though. Should they? And they are. Hmm. So we gotta figure out what went wrong there. Um, hmm. Eh. So for the enemy, is the enemy a prefab pull object? It should be. All right. This is the enemy. When rendered or becomes invisible, we said the false. On ship destroyed. We go enemy destroyed. We remove it. One enemy call create instant. As long as the enemy right here is a prefab pulled object, which it should be, it should work. It has, it's a pulled instance. So, oh, wh where does this go? Oh, I think my, my Visual Studio messed up or something. There we go. Yes, I just got a new computer and, uh, First time using Dream Labs on it, so it's some stuff got saved over. Uh, also, it's our first time using Unity too in Microsoft Visual Studio. Okay, now we have a different problem. So the enemies look mostly right, except when they, I'm guessing when they get destroyed. Yeah, when they get destroyed, they're not doing what they should. Because if I destroy him, that's when they, the popping starts. Look at the enemy ma enemy manager. Active enemies. So what is tracking health? Is it the ship? I think it might be the ship. damage receiver right here so it's, this is another location we have to do it and I think this is the last one hmm what do we have to do do it game object under it like that I don't know why oh, I guess it, the kinks are getting ironed out every time I restart this thing um, yeah that should work that should fix the issue So they shouldn't do that popping thing. Cool. Everything looks good now. 
And we have a simple system for returning things to the pool, which is which is nice. What is next? Um Next. Let's make the enemies. Let's make the enemies hurt us. We have health too. The player ship has health. Um, it actually has three health. Because we're using the same ship data. Because the enemy has different ship data. Actually, before we do this, let's make some enemy ship data. So we have a script, new scriptable object. Ship data. I'm going to call it enemy ship data. Call this. Give him a health of two. We're going to increase the acceleration for the player ship to 20. And maybe make him... Yeah, make make them like 20 as well, but their max speed is only four. It's for some difference. So let's just assign this to our ship data here, enemy ship data. Like I said, the reason the reason why we do an inscriptable object is it all, one thing is it like all these variables will there'll only be one instance which will reduce some memory. It's not a usually a big deal unless you have tons and tons of objects. But the other thing is it's like it makes it easy so ed editing data can be done like without touching the prefab, which can make things better. So they take two hits now. And I'm faster. I think I should have like a slowdown factor. I think I'm... I think the ship's slowdown, slowdown rate is not fast enough for, for the player. I think I might want to add that because I feel like I drift too much. Do something about that before we move on to like making the ship smarter. Um, we'll just use the acceleration value, I think. So in the ship where we're doing the slowdown, let's also multiply it the delta time by the acceleration value type ship data dot acceleration that will just make it so we slow down quicker yeah it's a lot quicker it's almost like instant Yeah, maybe that's too fast. Okay, that's 20 times. Oh, uh, yeah. That's right, I bumped my acceleration up a ton. Okay, so let's call this, like, let's get a different value. D-A-C-L-E-R-A-T-I-O-N equals 2.0. I was looking at this number, I was like, oh yeah, that should work, but really that's a default value, and it's not really a good number. So, let's do this. It's just a little scaler to make it so that we can, uh, you know, slow, slow down a little faster, or control it. Yeah, that's much better. Uh, actually, I maybe want to go further. Let's try three. Eventually, like if we have, you know, yeah, it feels a lot better. Oh my God, it feels a lot better. If we have more, uh, we play around with us more, we can uh, make new ships. And it really would be a big part of it would just be making ship data, different ship data, and so change how they feel and stuff like that. Um, maybe acceleration is too fast, but the, yeah, I don't know. It's not bad. I like these values. I can, I think maybe if I can go high on the acceleration, maybe like cut this down a little bit. 
I don't spend too much time on this. <laughs> oh, this fits good. Yeah, it just feels a little better. It's more of like a shoot 'em up game. Yeah, okay, that's that's feeling good. Alright. So now that we got some deacceleration, players feeling better. Let's um let's uh make the enemy, if we hit the enemy ship, we should, what, probably destroy the enemy ship, or destroy the enemy ship and do damage, right? The player. This will be first, first wave. Um, oh. So. This is how we're doing damage right now. The ship is a damage receiver and it calls something will have something will call this, so like the projectiles. So let's find all references and we can see that this guy, the projectile, is when a collision is hit, we're gonna call damage receiver do do damage. Essentially. Um, yeah, so we should do the same thing or the, or the enemy. Um, we could kind of copy this. Make it a little component. Um, we want to. Or just apply it to enemies. We'll apply it to enemies right now. Um, let's apply it to enemies right now. So on collision enter, this will essentially, we, we actually don't want to do this. We want to go through the ship and actually set our health to zero because that will go through the event of uh, of uh, actually we probably want to sorry we actually want to do damage to ourself I don't think since there's no event tied to just health update right maybe there should be Hmm, that might be better. So whenever uh, this dealt damage, it would say... It would say... Uh, do the check. Hmm. Let's do it like this. Let's just apply damage to ourselves right now. Do that for me. So we go ship. The enemy's gonna do damage to itself. Do damage. You understand. Uh, Oh, we already have a damage data down there. Oh. Call it self damage data. And we're going to say, go like this. I'm going to say damage equals ant dot max. We want to kill it self, no matter what. So do that. And then uh, we can do the same thing we're doing here and just get the contact point. And that will go through the whole thing of uh, killing ourselves if an enemy hits us. You know, if, if the enemy hits uh, us. 
So, the thing about this is that as soon as I get hit by a projectile, it's going to hurt us. So we can't put that here. We have to make sure there's a damage receiver first because projectiles are just damaged dealers right now. Um, and then damage receiver will do take damage. Let's try this out. So, it still takes two hits to kill him. Oh, you see him hit the, the rock and he blew up. Uh, we blew up. Three hits. So, that's that. Now we don't have to, now we can't respawn or anything, so we have to restart the whole thing. So it's now becoming actual type of game, because we can, now we can die. If we hit this rock, oh, oh we don't have that for us because it's only applied to them. One, two, three. Okay. So that's, that's that. Next, next. What's that? So we should probably do this for asteroids too, right? It has a damage receiver on it. Oh, this is still using non-pooling, so we'd want to do like... We want to do like game object dot that active equals false. What else? Um, so there's not much going on here. He's a damage receiver. So I'm thinking about making this a damage, making a damage dealer script. Or something. So whenever the damage dealer scripts hit something, hit something that they can take damage, it will just do it. You know, you don't have to. Uh, it won't have. We don't have to like create this code a bunch of times. Another thing we can do is well to do that we're gonna have to like share this health data right like everything that has health even asteroids have health even though it's just usually it's one um one thing we'll have to do is share the health so that multiple objects it could be part of damage receiver, like it could be um, part of this thing saying, hey, we got health. So if we have health, do damage or whatever. Hmm, that's an idea. Um, sorry, I'm kind of rambling. I think I'm really tired today. Um, so I think we should do a damage dealer component though. Re regardless, we should do a damage dealer component. Let's go to our damage system here. Great, C sharp script. Damage dealer. This will just Save some, uh, you know, we're just doing some reuse essentially, getting rid of some reuse here. Oops. I want this whole thing here. So 
So all this is gonna do is do one damage. We can also add a variable here for damage. So I'm not gonna like that. Is it? to do this so damage dealer script can go on all projectiles we can get rid of all this code here um yeah so we're kind of separating the damage dealing and the the moving of the projectiles and then for the ship the enemy i should say not the ship so we can't just slap that baby on there because sure it will do damage to the player but it won't hurt itself so we can either add a variable here that makes it hurt ourselves which i don't think i don't really like um, we could have a derived sort of, uh, opponent would work. Hmm. Thinking about that more. Derive it. Then we're going to have to kind of duplicate the beginning of this code, which kind of sucks. But... We're gonna have to. We only want to do damage here if, if this is a damage receiver. If there's not, then we don't want to do it. So we probably have to duplicate it. <sighs> um, but the asteroid. We do damage, no problem. We do the same thing. Hmm. So let's just other thing is is we can make damage dealers on everything, right? This might be a simpler solution. So if the player has a damage dealer, it will do the damage to the ship, and if the ship or if and the enemy has a damage dealer, it will do the damage to the player. So we get rid of this. We're going to use a component now. And a projectile. We got to get rid of this one too. Because we're going to use this component now. It's probably the most elegant solution, I think. Projectiles damage dealer one. I want to make the asteroid damage dealer three. Apply. Player ships. Damage dealer. So this is just collision damage dealing. So I'm going to make him, because he's our player, he's always going to break stuff he hits. I'm going to say override, apply, thousand. And then the enemies. Damage dealer, and let's make it a two by two. See how this plays out. So, to do two damage to me. Oh, it did more than two damage to me. Oh, do I only have two health? What do I have? I thought I have more than two health. Three health. I should have been fine. Yeah, why well, is doing it's doing double damage to me? If I had to guess. But that's 
They're gonna blow each other up, okay, so... Looks like we're doing double damage. Why would we be doing double damage? So, on collision enter. Oh, oh, we're disabling it here. That's, that's silly. So the projectiles aren't going to get disabled by getting rid of that, though. So, right? Because I, I pop them on, it's going to go right through them. This. It's like a piercing projectile. Oh, I stopped on that one. But I can take one, two before I die. Okay, so that works. So making the projectile, uh, making the projectile take stable. I could take it a couple ways. I could actually make it take damage. Um, just have a, a do damage function here, which might be an easy, easy solution for now. Let's do that. So if it takes damage, we just disable it. Implement it. Down region. I usually do this for my interfaces. Fix any damage. I will do game object set active equals false. So, so it's hitting them now. Takes two shots. Doesn't go through. It seems to work pretty well. Uh, I just wanted to double check that the uh, asteroid does kill me in one hit. <sighs> yep, kills each other. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, we have like more of a more of a damage system than we used to have. Um, it's reusable. There might be some nuances that we have to work on, but overall, it, it kind of works. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, hit the like button. And if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I'm also happy to answer any questions or comments below. Thanks so much for watching.